your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. The History of the Northwestern Railway Part 2 Hello everybody. This is Ellsbridge Studios. Today I will continue from where I left off. If you haven't already, go back and watch part 1, or this isn't going to make much sense. Finished part 1? Good, let's continue. In 1954, Charles Topham Hatt became the controller of the Northwestern Railway, and easily filled his father's shoes. However, one problem he had was Percy. He had caused all sorts of trouble, combined with the fact that the work in the Tidmouth Yard was too much for him. To solve this, in 1955 Charles Topham Hatt bought a Great Western Railway 5700 class pannier tank engine called Montague, to take Percy's place in the yard. Montague arrived and revealed he preferred to be known by his nickname Duck. The big engines mistook Duck's Great Western Railway work ethic for simplicity, so they ordered him about like they did with Percy, so the two tank engines refused to let Henry, Gordon, and James into the shed. Sir Topham had scolded Duck and Percy but told the big engines it served them right. A few days later, with Duck working hard in the yard, Percy was moved to Knapford to build a new harbour on the site of the old one. Knapford station was moved from south of the River Ells to a new site north of the river. A new line was built from Knapford, along the west side of Dryor to Torirek. The old line to the east of Dryor was reproposed as a goods only line down to the harbour, and meets the current branch line just south of Ellsbridge. During this time, Percy raced Harold, a helicopter, down to the harbour, and he won. His fireman made up a song that everyone along the Farker branch line now knows. Said Harold, helicopter to our Percy, you are slow. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. But Percy with his stone trucks did the trip in record time And we beat the helicopter on our old branch line Charles Topham Hatt was cross when he found out about Percy's race But Percy made up for it when he braved flooded rails to bring the vicar's Sunday school home In 1956, at the age of 76 Sir Topham Hatt passed away peacefully in his sleep this meant Charles inherited his father's baronetcy, becoming Sir Charles Topham Hatt, but most people knew him as Sir Topham Hatt II or by his father's nickname, the Fat Controller. Throughout 1956 Percy boasted about the time he braved a severe storm and flooded rails, but he stopped after some trucks pushed him into the sea. Later in 1956, the engine due to pull the express on the other railway derailed when it left the yard, so Gordon took the express to London and back. When Gordon returned, Sir Charles asked James to take the express to give Gordon a chance to rest. He also told Toby he needed to go to the works for some repairs. On the way to the works, Toby ran out of water and was left stranded on the main line. So, James had to rescue him whilst pulling the express, but when they arrived at Croven's Gate, some children thought it was James who had broken down and Toby had rescued him instead. 1956 was also the year that Sir Charles took his engines to an exhibition in England, although Thomas was nearly left behind because he damaged himself crashing through a set of buffers when he was showing off. 1957 saw the arrival of two visitors. The first was Great Western Railway 3700 Class 3440 City of Truro, allegedly the first engine to run at 100 miles per hour, or 160 kilometers per hour. This was never proven, so the record doesn't stand. Either way Gordon was jealous and tried to run at 100 miles per hour himself, but lost his dome in the process. 
the second visitor was a rather oily character, a BR Class 08, known simply as Diesel. Bought on trial to shunt the yard, Diesel caused confusion and delay when he derailed a train of empty trucks in the middle of the yard after a coupling snapped. Since then, the trucks have teased him about this with a song. Hit it, Ringo! Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with diesel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about, like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, up goes the diesel. Thinking it was his fault, Diesel told lies about Duck, which saw the great western engine in trouble with, galloping sausage, rusty red scrap iron, and old square wheels, Diesel's nicknames for Gordon, James, and Henry. Duck was sent away to Wellsworth, while Sir Topham Hatt investigated the matter. Diesel was found out and sent back to the other railway, and Duck, once he was repaired after crashing into a barber's shop, was brought back home. By 1959, the workload on the North Western Railway had grown so much that Sir Charles ordered a new engine from Scotland, a Caledonian Railway 652 class. However, two engines arrived. Donald and Douglas. The twins' first few months were quite eventful. Donald lost a coach, and then crashed into a signal box. Douglas on the other hand, accidentally destroyed a spiteful brake van when he tried to help James up Gordon's Hill. But after they proved themselves in the snow, Sir Charles decided to keep both engines and have them painted blue. In 1960, the board of directors wanted to try another diesel engine on the Northwestern Railway, but after what had happened last time, Sir Charles refused. Then Thomas crashed into the Farker station master's house, so Sir Charles had no choice but to bring a diesel to Sodor, at least on trial, specifically a BR Class 101 diesel railcar called Daisy. At first Daisy was lazy and stubborn, and had an altercation with a bull. But after Percy's accident with some stone trucks and some strong words from Sir Charles, she changed her act and is now a really useful engine. In 1961, Dr. Beeching visited Sodor with the same ideas for the Northwestern Railway as he had for the rest of Britain, but a few choice words from Sir Charles soon sent him packing, and the Northwestern Railway was, for the most part, left alone when Dr. Beeching released his reports in 1962 and 1965. However, as per the 1962 report, the Norambi branch was forced to close. 1962 saw two visitors to the Northwestern Railway, Stepney, a friendly A1 Terrier, and the first engine to be rescued for the Bluebell Railway in Essex, and a Class 40 diesel, who by contrast was stuck up and rude. During this visit, the diesel broke down, so Duck and Stepney had to take his heavy train for him. Stepney went back to the Bluebell Railway leaving, the Northwestern Railway with a new friend. The diesel, on the other hand left two things, a rather nasty smell, and a battered bowler hat. In the summer of 1964, the heat damaged the tracks on the Farker branch so it was closed for repairs and Thomas was tasked with delivering supplies for the workmen. Meanwhile there was a large increase in ships at the Tidmouth Harbour, which led to an increase in work for Duck. So, Percy was reassigned to help Duck until another engine could be found. Unfortunately, the engine turned out to be Diesel, so Duck and Percy went on strike. However Diesel was soon sent away again after he pushed some trucks into the sea, so Duck and Percy had to manage by themselves. But in autumn Percy was sent back to the Farker branch. When he returned, Thomas and Percy had a falling out over a ghost, of all things. Not long afterwards, Percy crashed into a cart of lime, so with Toby's help, he pretended to be a ghost to scare Thomas. But Thomas got the last laugh as a crate of treacle was upset over Percy on a windy day, and hay blowing about stuck to his boiler, making Percy look like a woolly bear. It was around this time that Toby got fed up with the Farker Quarry's new Class 04 diesel, Mavis, so he made her take the trucks herself, but she stopped in the wrong place and got stuck. Toby refused to help, until his driver told him he would be in bigger trouble if he didn't. 
Later on, Mavis made a plan for the trucks to push her along the line, but Toby arrived while she was elsewhere, so the trucks pushed him instead, leaving Toby suspended on the rails over a collapsed bridge until Mavis came to save him. In 1965, and after 20 years awaiting an overhaul, Marklin was assigned to the Tidmouth Harbour to help duck. Also in 1965, Sir Charles brought a new engine to Sodor on trial. A Metropolitan Vickers, diesel-electric Type 2, more commonly known as a BR Class 28, or a Kobo. This engine, named Boko, spent his trial helping out on Edwards' branch line. Gordon also ended up on the Brendam branch line after a signaling error. Both occasions led to Bill and Ben playing a couple of their tricks. James was also stung by a bee in 1965. Later that year some important visitors came to the island. On their last day Edward took them to see Bill and Ben. On the way back however, Edward's crank pin broke, that combined with a heavy storm meant he almost didn't make it home, but tried anyway. Sir Charles was cross that he was late, but the passengers all praised his efforts. 1967 was a busy year. This was the year the famous Flying Scotsman visited the Northwestern Railway. During his visit Henry was jealous, so Duck tricked him with six old and rusty tenders. Towards the end of Flying Scotsman's visit, two diesels came to Sodor on trial, a BR Class 35 Hymek No. D7101, and a Class 46, No. D199. D7101's trial was sort of a success, and after a second trial later that year he became a member of the Northwestern Railway's fleet, but now everyone calls him Bear, after the sound his engine makes. D199's trial however was a disaster, and Spamcan, as the signalman called him, was sent away. Later in 1967, the Arlesdale Railway from Arlesbrew to Arlesdale officially opened and the branch to Arlesburg was reopened. Donald and Douglas collected ballasty from Arlesbrew, but one day they were both busy so Duck went instead. Duck soon made friends with the little engines of the Arlesdale Railway, so Sir Charles decided to give Duck the Arlesbrew branch line as his own. However, there was too much work for Duck alone so Donald and Duck took it in turns to help. One time Donald ended up with a duck in his water tank. In fact this duck, called Dilly, grew very fond of Donald. Whilst Sir Charles was looking for an engine to help Duck on a permanent basis, Douglas saved Oliver, a Great Western Railway 1400 class auto tank, from scrap, along with his auto coach, Isabel, and brake van, Toad, who is now Douglas's brake van. Douglas was worried about Oliver being sent back and scrapped, but luckily Sir Charles bought him and had him restored. When Oliver started work in 1968, the Arlesbrew branch was now run by two Great Western Railway engines, so the line unofficially became known as the Little Western. Oliver's first few months were eventful, most notably ending up bunker down in the turntable well. This led to Scruffy and the truck singing another famous Sudrian song. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever. Says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When he orders us about with the greatest folly, we just push him down the well, pop, goes old Ollie. However, this teasing stopped when Oliver accidentally pulled Scruffy apart. In the same year Duck and Oliver had to contend with an AEC Bridgemaster double-decker bus called Bulgy. Bulgy said he knew a shortcut and could beat the train from Arlesburg to Tidmouth, but instead he managed to wedge himself under a bridge. After that, no one would ride in him, so now he's a henhouse in a field right next to the Little Western. In 1970, Sir Charles went on holiday in Scotland, when he stumbled upon an old shed where he found Bloomer, an old London North Western Railway 222 Bloomer class tender engine. Sir Charles tracked down Bloomer's owner and bought her. Bloomer was unable to move under her own steam, so she was put on flat cars and taken to Croven's Gate Works for her restoration, which, due to a couple of hiccups, wasn't completed until 1975. 
In 1974, the North Western Railway got another addition, a Class 47 number D47111, now known as Jeff, who is the works engine and is based at Crovens Gate. In 1977, 87546 was bought by the governor of Sodor to be his private engine, and was named Crovan, after King Godred Crovan of Sodor. The same year the three EF1 electric engines that ran the line were unable to keep up with an increase in workload, and were so worn out they were retired to a museum. Without motive power on the Peel Godred branch, the Northwestern Railway bought four BR Class 87 electric engines, Jeffrey, Sean, Steve and Andy, to handle the goods work, and a BR Class 312-1 EMU, Venloe, to look after the passengers. In 1979, Gordon needed an overhaul. During this time Henry, James, Alice, and Bear took turns to cover the express, but one day there were no engines available to pull the express except Thomas, Duck and Percy. The three tank engines had to triplehead the express as far as Crovens Gate, but Percy broke down at the top of Gordon's Hill, and Duck broke down just outside Crovens Gate Station. In 1981, D40125, a BR Class 40, brought a goods train to Tidmouth and was supposed to spend the night in Tidmouth sheds, but refused to when he saw all the steam engines. The following day he entered the shed to access the cleaning and refueling equipment, but was unable to stop on the oily rails, and crashed through the wall at the end of the shed. 1982 was a busy year so Sir Charles brought an engine to help out temporarily, and D199 was the only engine available. One day he nearly ran out of fuel, so he decided to use some from the tankers he was hauling. But the tankers weren't filled with fuel. They were filled with beer. This caused D199 to break down, so he had to be taken away to have his engine and fuel tank cleaned out. In 1983, the Farker stationmaster's new car was stolen. The next day Thomas saw the thieves driving away in the car, so he and his crew alerted the signalman at the next signal box, who then called the police. The thieves were soon caught and the car returned. Sir Charles Topham Hatt came to thank Thomas and his crew for their actions personally. Not long after, Purse's friend, Tom Tipper the postman, had his van replaced with a bicycle to save money. Then some naughty boys messed with the bike causing Percy to accidentally crush it. Luckily, Tom was given a new van to replace the broken bicycle. One night in 1983, the flying kipper was extra heavy, so Duck had to help Henry up the hill. Unfortunately, the tail lamp fell off, and since he couldn't see the back of the train, Duck crashed into it and ended up covered in fish. Later that year, Gordon told the other engines about an old friend of his, Great Northern Railway C1 No. 288, Alice. When he heard Sir Charles was looking for another engine, Gordon suggested he bring Alice to Sodor to help out in the meantime. But when Sir Charles investigated, he found out that the Preservation Society looking after Alice was all but bankrupt. So instead he bought Alice and sent Gordon to London to bring her to the Northwestern Railway, where she has remained since. On Christmas Eve in 1983, Sir Charles was making the Fat Controller's annual speech when he announced he was retiring, and that his son, Stephen Topham Hatt, was going to be the next Fat Controller, effective from the 1st of January, 1984. In 1984, Stephen Topham Hatt took over as controller of the Northwestern Railway. This is the same Stephen Hatt that went on holiday with his grandparents to Toby's old line in East Anglia back in 1951. He also inherited the family nickname, the Fat Controller. During his first year as controller, Stephen Hatt decided to reopen the old Kirk Ronan branch that had closed during the Great Depression. And instead of looking for an engine to run it, he decided it would be better to build a new one, specifically an LNER V3, which was named Eric. That same year, 
James was shunting in the yard at Tidmouth. The signalman couldn't see as there was a thick layer of fog, so he accidentally switched the points whilst James was using them. This caused one of his flatbeds to run along two tracks and knock over a signal. Henry teased James about this, until one day when his tender coupling broke. His fireman had to throw the fire out, but he was in such a hurry he threw the fire onto the wooden sleepers, which set them on fire. Then in that winter, James's fireman overfilled his tender, so his filler cap froze over, and he broke down. Luckily, Jeff was nearby and able to rescue him. There was something else that happened in 1984, what was it? Oh yeah! On the 9th of October, 1984, the first episode of Thomas and Friends aired in the UK, and was narrated by Beatles drummer, Ringo Starr. And yes, the TV series exists in the Railway Series universe, not that any of the engines like how the show portrays them. In 1985, Thomas and Percy had a big falling out, made worse when one of Percy's coal trucks burst open and covered Thomas in coal dust. Then Percy crashed through some buffers and into a coal bunker. Thomas had to go to the works, but this left him with a stiff handbrake, so when he had a relief fireman he didn't remember to check the handbrake was applied properly, so Thomas became a runaway. Then Percy had an incident with a tree. It all came to a head when Thomas's crank pin snapped, causing his side rod to burst his water tank. At first Percy refused to help but later agreed. On the way home they made up their quarrel and haven't fallen out since. Later in 1985, a preservation society bought a BR2MT number 78018 from Barry Scrapyard in North Wales but lacked the facilities and expertise to restore him. Stephen had offered use of the North Western Railway's works, and his father, Sir Charles, volunteered to oversee the repairs and provide his expertise on steam engines. After his restoration 78018, who named himself Barry after the scrapyard he was saved from, was due to go to his new home on a heritage railway, but since James had broken down, Barry stayed on Sodor to help out until James was repaired. Barry now lives on the Great Central Railway in Loughborough, Leicestershire. Also in 1985, Patrick, a class 40 from the other railway, who was good friends with most of the engines on Sodor, was made a permanent resident of the North Western Railway after the other railway withdrew him from service. 1986 was a bad year for Gordon, first he slipped on some icy rails and wore them so badly they needed replacing. Then he accidentally covered a wedding party in soot, causing Stephen Topham had to have to break a trip to London to apologize to the wedding party. Only for Gordon to cover him in soot too. And then one day Gordon had to pull the express despite his fire bars collapsing. He later made up for all of this by taking a rail tour from Barrow to Carlisle and back, when the engine originally scheduled for the trip broke down. While Gordon was away, the North Western Railway saw the first visit of Philippa, or Pip, and Emma, a BR Class 43 high-speed train set or HST, who had come to cover for Gordon while he was away. Unfortunately, the HST's cooling system failed, so James had to rescue the passengers. This was also the year that the railway's main workshops became a separate company, the Sodor Steam Works. Diesel came to Sodor for the third time in 1987, when he was sent to work on the Farker branch while Percy was under repair. One day Diesel destroyed a truck, so Stephen Topham had made plans to send him away, but on his way home Diesel was stopped at a signal because Daisy had leaked oil on the rails, 
and Thomas had slipped on the rails causing Clarabelle to derail on a set of trap points, so Diesel had to rescue Thomas and his coaches in order to leave. Clarabelle asked Sir Stephen to give Diesel another chance. He was skeptical at first, but after Diesel explained his predicament on the other railway, Sir Stephen told Diesel he could stay on the Northwestern Railway, provided he caused no more trouble, but this really was his last chance. In 1988, one of the bridges on the Farker branch needed repairs, so a weight restriction was put in place. As Thomas was too heavy he was sent to work on the Brendan branch while Boko was undergoing repairs. During this time Thomas collided with a dairy lorry and ended up covered in milk and eggs, which Bill and Ben teased him about constantly, until one day during a storm, whilst Ben was crossing a dip in the land called the Drain. A huge wave crashed into Ben's cab and extinguished his fire, so Thomas had to rescue him. Since then the twins have agreed not to tease Thomas again. While Thomas was away, Mavis had a collision with a lorry, and was sent to the works to be repaired, leaving Percy, Toby, and Daisy rushed off their wheels. They were all glad when Thomas came back in early 1989. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. In 1989 saw stories from the first season of Thomas and Friends air for the first time in America, as part of Shining Time Station, with Ringo Starr returning as narrator, as well as playing Mr. Conductor in the human segments. He was joined by station manager Stacy Jones, played by actress Diddy Conn. In 1990, Thomas was invited to the National Railway Museum in York to attend the Great Railway Show. While he was there, Thomas met many famous engines such as LNER, A for Class 4468, Mallard, LMS Coronation Class 6229, Duchess of Hamilton, Stevenson's Rocket, LBSCRA1 Terrier, Box Hill, and many more. Thomas didn't arrive in one piece, so he was sent straight to the workshops, where he became good friends with an LNER V2. 4772, Green Arrow. Green Arrow was chosen to take some special rail tours to the seaside, while Thomas ran on the demonstration track. Some threw a bag onto the track so Thomas had to make an emergency stop. This caused his brakes to jam on and he had to release steam, which frightened a child. One day the rail tour was too heavy for Green Arrow, so Thomas volunteered to help. The journey there was uneventful, but on the way back the ground beneath the track had been eroded by the river, and the track was unsafe. Thomas noticed this and stopped the train just in time to prevent an accident. For this, Thomas was made an honorary member of the National Collection, the official name for engines and rolling stock in the care of the National Railway Museum, and Thomas was given a plaque, which proudly hangs in his shed. Whilst Thomas was away, Sodor saw its worst snowstorm since 1947. It was so bad that Daisy was stuck in a snowdrift for an entire week. Then a bridge on the Farker branch collapsed and had to be rebuilt. When Thomas came back, Daisy was bringing some important people down to Knapford to welcome Thomas home, but a traffic cone got stuck in her brake system and it jammed on. Luckily, her brakes were unjammed and she was able to reach Knapford just before Thomas arrived. In 1992, Henry was withdrawn for several months for an overhaul. While he was away, James had to pull the flying kipper, but had a crate of fish dropped in front of him, which made the rails very slippery. When his overhaul was finished, Henry was painted with a red undercoat, but before he could be painted green the turntable at Tidmouth jammed, leaving Henry as the only engine available to take the express. So he had no choice but to pull the express before he was fully painted. 
To make matters worse, one of Coach's brakes jammed on and Henry had to remove it from the train. Luckily, Henry was soon repainted green. In 1993 the other railway's shunting engine at Barrow in Furness was reassigned, so the North Western Railway bought their own engine to shunt the yard, a BR Class 02 called Caden. 1993 was also the year Wilbert, a Hunslet austerity saddle tank engine, came to visit from his home on the Dean Forest Railway in Gloucestershire. Wilbert was supposed to help out Duck and Oliver on the Arlsberg branch, but after Percy had an accident which left him covered in porridge, Wilbert had to go to the Farker branch instead. His time on Sodor went rather well, apart from his crew accidentally filling his water tank with milk. Over the course of 1994 to 1997, the railways in Britain were privatized, meaning the Northwestern region was once again the Northwestern Railway as of 1994 with regional chairman Stephen Topham Hatt becoming controller. 1994 was a busy year. One of Wilbert's brothers was brought to look after the railway's odd jobs and help out on the branch lines when things were busy. Douglas soon figured out that Sheffield, the engine's name, was 16, an engine from a story told by Wilbert, where 16 had passed a danger sign and tumbled down an embankment. 1994 is also the year Bulges Bridge collapsed and had to be rebuilt after a lorry crashed into it. In 1995 the North Western Railway celebrated the Golden Jubilee of the Railway Series, 50 years of print. The preparations were problematic, Gordon's brake pipe was damaged by a bird, one of Edward's wheels fell off and landed in a farmer's cabbage patch and rabbit burrows caused a section of the Farker branch to collapse while Thomas crossed it. Luckily, all these problems were rectified in time for the celebrations and the arrival of a special visitor, the Prince of Wales. Later in 1995, a BR Class 56 called Owen was bought to assist in the reopening of the Norambi branch, and has since pulled the goods trains on that line. In 1996, the Norambi branch officially reopened, and a pair of BR Class 142 rail motors, called Evan and Edwin, were bought to take care of the passenger services. 1996 was also the year two of Stephen Topham Hatt's children, Charlie and Emily, found a BR-8F called Peter, in the tunnel on the old Balahu cutoff. Later in 1996, a fishing boat unloaded their fish at Norambi by mistake. So since he was the only engine available, Thomas was sent to collect the fish, and ended up with one crate being dropped on him, causing him to smell like fish. Thomas took the fish to Tidmouth, however he and his driver noticed that the track along the coast was in a bad way. They crossed it safely, but the driver decided to tell control when they reached Tidmouth. Thomas shunted his trucks at the back of the flying kipper, and Henry set off. Due to repairs on Henry's tunnel, the decision was made to send Henry along the Balahu cutoff, and then along the Norambi branch. Thomas's driver told them that the route was too dangerous for a big engine like Henry, but by the time the warning reached the signalman, Henry was already on the coastal track. Needless to say, the track had sunk into the sea, and because of the fog Henry couldn't see what had happened. He plunged into the sea and had to wait for floating cranes to rescue him. Sadly, on the 21st of March, 1997, the thin clergyman himself, Wilbert Audrey, died peacefully in his sleep at the age of 85. 1997 was also the year when at the age of 83, Sir Charles Topham Hatt died, and Stephen inherited the baronetcy, becoming Sir Stephen Topham Hatt, or Sir Topham Hatt III. On New Year's Day in 2000, the North Western Railway celebrated the new millennia with a huge fireworks display at Tidmouth, although this nearly didn't happen, as Thomas broke down on his way back after collecting the fireworks from Knapford Harbour. Luckily, Diesel had been sent to collect some ale from the brewery at Farker for the celebrations, and was able to rescue Thomas and his train on the way back to Tidmouth. In 2007, more workers were needed at the quarry, 
causing Henrietta to complain about being overloaded. A few days later, Thomas's driver found an old furnace railway coach called Victoria in the station garden at Ellsbridge. Despite his driver telling him not to, Thomas told Sir Stephen Topham Hatt about her, so he decided to have her restored. When she was restored, Edward brought her to Knapford, where Thomas took Victoria to Farker. Now she works with Toby, Henrietta, and Elsie as part of Toby's vintage train. A lot happened in 2009. Due to a shortage of mail, the post trains were cancelled. Not long after, Thomas had an accident where he crashed into a car. At the works he met his old friend and mentor, Lily, who after 70 years at the bottom of the ocean, had been rescued and restored. Later that year, the Tidmouth Yard was expanded to fit a new container terminal. A BR Class 14 called Iris was bought to run it, but she couldn't come straight away, so Bill and Ben ran the yard in the meantime, as the china clay pits were closed for repairs. Two new additions were made to the engine roster in 2010. D199, now called Ted, and an IVAT 2MT called Phoenix that Ted had brought with him to Sodor, so she wouldn't be scrapped. Ted works on the main line, and Phoenix helps Eric on the Kirk Ronan branch. In 2011, the North Western Railway made preparations to celebrate Wilbert Audrey's centenary, his 100th birthday were he still alive. During this time, Thomas and his crew saved an injured swan, and Gordon, who was feeling depressed that Pip and Emma might replace him as the express main engine, and his crew, put out a fire near a railway bridge using the hose in Gordon's cab designed for cleaning his footplate. Because of this, Gordon was rewarded with the Queen's Fire Service Medal. To celebrate Audrey's centenary, Sir Stephen Topham had planned to have a big event at Tidmouth to unveil a bust of Audrey, and sent James to collect it. Unfortunately, Henry's tunnel collapsed shortly after James, with the bust in tow, passed through it. Luckily, the tunnel was repaired by the 15th of June when Pip and Emma brought some special guests to Tidmouth for the celebrations, including Wilbert Audrey's son Christopher, and the Prince of Wales, who unveiled the bust which has stood at Tidmouth Station ever since. It was around this time that Sir Stephen Topham Hatt was diagnosed with cancer. According to his doctor, it was curable, but the side effects of treatment meant that Sir Stephen could no longer run a railway full-time. This led to the infamous controller changeover. Sir Stephen retired a week before he was due to nominate a successor to the board of directors. During this week the deputy controller, Norman Spencer, took control. He brought a modern BR Class 67 called Shane on trial. Gordon set out to prove a point by challenging Shane to a time trial, but since he was running flat out Gordon was unable to stop at a crossing before he crashed into a stalled lorry. And instead of having him repaired, Mr. Spencer planned to sell Gordon to the National Railway Museum in York. This was enough to convince Sir Stephen not to nominate Mr. Spencer to be his successor. But this gave him a difficult decision to make, since his eldest son, Richard, had gone into IT, and his other son, Charlie, had gone into politics and public television. However, his daughter Emily had spent the week clearing up Mr. Spencer's mess, so Sir Stephen nominated Emily to be his successor, and the board had no hesitations in accepting Emily Hatt as the next fat controller. While Gordon was away in 2011 being repaired, Emily Hatt bought Tornado, a new build Peppercorn A1, to Sodor to help out with the Express. Shortly after Gordon returned, the Express's schedule was changed in order to remain competitive with a hovercraft service running between Norambi and Blackpool. But in trying to keep to the new timetable, Gordon had to run flat out, and damaged himself in the process 
so he decided after an impressive 88 years, it was time to retire from express services, and recommended that, since they were faster than him, Pip and Emma should be his replacements, and Emily had agreed. Later that year the Northwestern Railway started a subsidiary company, the Northwest Package Express, which made use of the old post vans as part of this new package courier service. This also saw the return of Norman Spencer, who was made senior director of the Northwest Package Express. The engines weren't too keen on this as Mr. Spencer knew so little about railways, but since he was a businessman he made sure the Northwest Package Express operated successfully. In 2012, a Great Western Railway 6100 class tank engine was found in a valley, next to a bridge west of Kildane. After a shaky start, the engine, whose name was William, has become a member of the family and now works with Duck and Oliver on the Little Western. 2013 saw two more additions to the engine roster. An LMS 3F Jinty, and an OF Kitson Pug, who have been friends with Percy since the 1930s. 2015 saw Thomas celebrate his 100th birthday. In 2016, Thomas found Glynn, one of the old coffeepot engines that had worked at the Tory Wreck lead mine, on an overgrown siding long since forgotten. And no, this is not Glynn from The Adventure Begins. During 2019 and 2020, Thomas visited many heritage railways and took part in several railway shows around the world. And no, this is in no way based off or related to big world big adventures. The continuity errors in that are beyond belief. So, that brings us to 2022. It has now been 80 years since Wilbert Audrey told his son Christopher the very first story in the Railway series, Edward's Day Out. 80 years, 42 books, 24 seasons of TV, 14 movies, and hundreds of thousands of fan creations later. That brings us to now. If you enjoyed this video on my interpretation of Sodor's history, then please, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I'll see you again soon.